Hi, my name is Ian Bearda from Podio Leather, uh, and in this video I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to the main tools that you'll need uh, for simple leather projects. Something like this uh, uh, MacBook sleeve which we're going to make uh, in part two of the video, um, but even if you're not making uh, the MacBook sleeve, this video is a great introduction to the main tools you'll need for leather work, how to use them, what they're called, and uh, a few tips from me on how to get the best from them. Uh, the first one uh, is kind of essential if you're going to do any more than, than any sort of serious leather work uh, and that is basically uh, a metal ruler. Um, of course you can use a plastic ruler um, but to be honest when you're cutting it with a, with a, a sharp blade the plastic ones almost inevitably you'll shave off a piece of the ruler or, or, or you'll slip and it's just, uh, I mean, just get yourself a metal ruler and you'll save yourself a lot of hassle. Um, if you can get one of these, it's a kind of, I think it's called a framing square, um, even better. Because to be honest, if you're doing anything like these MacBook covers, you'll need uh, 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 right angles and you'll need straight edges. So it, if you get a large one like this, it will save you a lot of bother. Um, if you can't, if you don't have a large one, uh, you can, I know what you're thinking, uh, if you don't have a, a large metal ruler, uh, then you can use a small metal ruler uh, and a set square uh, for doing the corners. But get yourself a. Uh, actually, we have. You can also use something like uh, something like this. There, I got this one on Amazon. Uh, it's probably my favourite ruler actually because uh, it's small, it's usable, it's marked in in both inches, centimeters, and millimeters, uh, and it's great for doing corners. Um, Okay, so a metal ruler, get yourself a metal ruler. Um, next up, uh, essen next essential item really, is uh, what they call a scratch awl. Uh, so that is uh, basically, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tool with a point on the end. Uh, it shouldn't be like super sharp, like, uh, the, the, like you wanna stab something, um, but as long as it's got a, a, a nice point, and you, you essentially use this either for, for marking corners, you can use it for, for pricking holes in the leather if the leather's not too thick. Um, but mostly you use it just for scratching lines. Um, the reason why you want to scratch lines rather than use a pen is so that it doesn't leave any ink. Uh, and if you draw anything on the leather, it's going to be very tough to get off and it just doesn't look as cool. Um, of course, you can draw on the inside of leather if it's going to be hidden. Uh, but to be honest, scratch all does a job and, and then you're just going to be able to rub it, you'll never see the lines. Um, so scratch all I would say is an essential item and we'll be using this just to mark out the, uh, the template before we cut it. Um, item number three, uh, a sharp knife, uh, a Stanley knife or a, a craft, craft blade, I don't know what you want to call these, a scalpel will do. Um, You'll, if you get into leather work and you, you start, you stick with it, uh, you'll end up, I'm sure you'll end up buying some fancy knife, like leather workers love knives. Um, you'll do a lot of cutting, you'll go around a lot of corners, you'll, uh, and, and you'll see there's a whole industry in, in craft knives for leather. But for now, since we're just starting out, a simple scalpel or Stanley knife or craft knife like this will be absolutely fine. Um, the only thing you have to be aware of with, with some of these knives is they, uh, when you're cutting leather, they tend to pull off uh, to one side so that they'll, um, ideally, you'll find it pulls away from your finger, but sometimes it does pull uh, towards you. So again, if, if you've got a good metal ruler, just make sure that you pull in slightly so you keep the blade up against the edge of the ruler while you're cutting. Otherwise, you have a tendency to sort of stray away from the straight edge and you end up with a, with a wonky piece of leather. Um, I guess this is another essential item. Uh, it's a, a, basically a, a, a nylon mallet. Um, and you'll, you'll use these a lot if you're using the pricking irons, which we'll discuss in a minute. Um, but I think it's an essential item. It, you, you use this also if you're going to do any stamping to, to mark your leather with a, a maker's mark. Um, and the reason why you don't use a normal hammer is because you're going to be using metal tools. Uh, and if you use a normal hammer to whack your metal tools, you're just going to knacker them. Uh, they're going to be ruined. So uh, this, this again, was a cheap, I think it cost me 20 pounds, 20 euros, $17, something like that. It's not a super expensive one. It, it's not super heavy. You can get bigger ones for, for whacking through thicker leather. But 
does the job and I use it all the time. Um, next up, so once you've cut your leather to size, uh, you're going to stick it together. So you need some contact cement. Um, you're going to, whenever you going to stitch anything uh, or, or do any serious leather work, you're going to need to glue it together first so it holds in place while you're stitching. Um, and good, good contact cement just makes that very easy. It's very easy to use. You just put it on, let it dry, squeeze it together, job done. Uh, next essential item uh, is what they call a um, uh, what they call a awl. So an awl is uh, basically what you use for pushing through the leather if you're going to be stitching hole by hole. Um, it's basically just a small tool for piercing uh, through the leather. It's um, I don't know if you can see. I'll try to hold it up to the camera here. Um, it, it's not circular. Um, these are these are what they call uh, diamond awls, um, and it's it's a sort of diamond shape because you you push it through at an angle, and it, your hole, holes are slightly slanted. Uh, it just makes a, a nicer stitching line. Um, but I mean, we we won't really use this for this project because I have the pricking irons, which I'll show you in a minute. But you'll need one. If you do any leather work, you'll need this for pushing through the leather. You, it's quite simple. You hold it in the palm of your hand, prick through the leather. Um, okay. Uh, next thing you'll need for this project specifically um, are some circles. Uh, some, some, basically, we're going we're gonna to have curved corners on the edge of the, of the MacBook case, and you'll need to find some, some ideally plastic tins that are of the right size that you can uh, draw around and then cut around. Um, this is a tin of proof hide for wax for uh, bike sandals. This is a small stamp, that, uh, a metal stamp that I use for the leather work, but equally a coin would be fine. Um, so you're going to use these. We, the, you'll, you look at the pattern, you're going to have three sizes of, of circle, which gives us three slightly different curves on the corners. Um, so you'll probably have to search around a little bit to find uh, some circles, but we'll need those uh, for the corners. Um, I'll show you quickly, there are, uh, you can buy these, um, these are kind of more fancy uh, craft uh, metal I think they're done for artists, so you can draw around get, get different circles of different sizes, uh, but they're popular with, with leather workers as well, because you can do, you know, small tight corners, or you can do bigger, uh, uh, more rounded corners. Um, but circles and tins will be fine. Uh, next item, so another hammer. Um, this is different from the nylon so this one this nylon sort of mallet for whacking stuff um, we have another hammer which is uh, I guess a cobbler's hammer for doing shoes uh, it's also different from a normal hammer because you wouldn't whack uh, metal with it it's got a slightly rounded face on on the front of the hammer it, it's smooth and you wouldn't hit any metal objects with it because you want it to stay smooth uh, and you use this just for hammering leather so if you've glued glued your two pieces together. You're just going to use this to hammer along the, the edge of the piece just to make sure that the glue binds really tight. Um, and you'll also use it to, to just go along, hammer along your stitching once you've done the stitching, just to uh, even it out. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't say it's 100% essential, but it's, it's very useful to have one of these. So uh, again, they're not super expensive. You can also pick up nice uh, cobbler hammers uh, on eBay, second hand, you know, it's quite nice to have an older, uh, older tool. Um, right, we're getting down through the stuff. So I think I would say, honestly, that's probably the most essential tools you'll need. Um, you will need uh, a nylon thread and two needles if you're going to be doing any stitching, which, to be honest, you'll need. Um, very, very few leather items you can make without stitching. So. Uh, I won't go into too much detail now about the nylon thread and the, st and, and the saddle stitching, but you, you need two needles, not one. Uh, they're not, the, the thing about leather needles is they're not sharp. If you're using sharp needles, you'll just keep catching the thread that you're crossing, okay? So you need blunt uh, leather needles 
and uh, nylon thread. Um, I discovered the best way to get hold of these uh, leather needles if you, if you need if you're just doing a couple of projects, you're not going to be doing a huge amount of work. Uh, on eBay, you can order um, what they call tiger thread, and you can order lengths of tiger thread. Um, so you can order it 5, 10, I think even 2 metres. Um, and almost they almost always send it with two leather needles. Uh, so if you just want to, you're going to do a couple of projects, order yourself a couple of lengths of tiger thread um, from eBay and you'll get a couple of needles. If not, you have to look around for specialist, uh, specialist shops. Um, so they're essential. Uh, ah, one more thing. Here we go. This thing. Um, I would put this also as an essential item. Um, it's called a stitching pony. So basically you put these two but you sit on it you put these two bits here between your legs and it just holds up uh, the piece of leather that you're stitching so you put the item in here screw it up and then while you're sat on it you've got two free hands which you can use to do the stitching if you don't have something like this you're going to struggle a little bit honestly it's going to be you, you can do it it just takes you forever because you have to do one needle at a time put the second needle through it's just it's just much more time consuming you're not going to have any consistency in your stitching um, so uh, even though it's a bit of a specialist item and you're not going to use it for anything apart from stitching leather items a stitching pony is probably an essential item um, they come without uh, they come with just uh, wooden ends this one did uh, so I just put some some off cuts of soft leather over the end just to uh, stop it damaging any leather items and uh, uh, to be honest, this one this one was also cheap, not very expensive. Um, it's not very good for doing large bits of large bags and stuff like that. But for for now, small stitching pony like this, uh, essential item. Okay, now now we're. I would say if you just had those things that we've been through, you would have enough to do. Uh, um, most basic leather things okay um, but you're going to make yourself you're going to make your life a lot lot easier if you um, if you get these kind of non-essential but but nice to have items um, so the first of these is almost essential and that's what they call uh, wing dividers um, they are literally just two uh, points uh, which you can adjust, okay? So with a clamp at the end and, and you can just adjust the size. So what you use these for is you, you adjust them to the width that you want. So let's say four millimeters, and then you would just run it along the, the side of the piece of leather that you're gonna mark, and then you mark your stitching line. So, you know, one end just runs along the side of the leather and the, the other point just marks a line. Um, you can, of course, do it with a ruler and a, uh, just your scratch all that we talked about earlier. Um, where these are great is when you get to a corner because you just want to run around the corner and you don't have to uh, uh, take them off the, off the piece of leather. You can just run around the whole piece uh, and mark a consistent uh, line. Um, one of the mistakes I made when I f the first thing I ever made from leather, I assumed actually that the, the stitching wasn't going to be very noticeable. You wouldn't really, the eye wouldn't pay much attention to it. Um, and so I just kind of roughly marked my stitching line. My holes were all over the place and it looked terrible. Um, I think because we're so used to having machine stitched uh, items, um, any inconsistency in, in your lines, so any, any kind of uh, stitches which are uh, off center or wobbly lines on your, on your leather work, they're going to stick out like a sore thumb. They really, they, they don't look good. Um, so whatever you use, you want to be consistent. You want everything to be symmetrical, clean, and these uh, wing dividers um, are great. Um, they're also good because if you're, if you're doing a project that has two or three different uh, widths that you need to measure. You can just set, if you've got two or three sets of these, you just set them to the right, um, uh, right width, and then you just use them throughout the project. Uh, so wing dividers are almost essential, but you can get away without them. Um, a bone, bone folder, I think they call these. Um, this one's not bone, it's just plastic. Um, 
you use these for once you've glued two bits of leather together and you've stitched it and everything your, your piece is almost finished you can just use these for for basically breaking the glue so if you've stuck two bits of uh, leather together you would just put this inside the item run run it along the, the the crease and it just breaks away any glue that's any unwanted glue that's stuck with two pieces of, of leather together um, it's not essential because to be honest you can use a small plastic ruler or even a, uh, a, a small piece of wood or even the, uh, the handle of a small um, uh, paintbrush. You can use anything this shape to get it done but they're, they're, they're quite useful to have uh, available on Amazon for next to nothing. Um, so a bone folder uh, is useful. Um, you can also use these when you're folding leather but we're not going to do anything, uh, any leather folding in this project so useful but not essential. Um, a, this one is just a small tool for measuring, measuring the thickness of leather. If you've ordered some leather uh, uh, online you don't need to worry about measuring it, uh, fine. Uh, or if you've just selected some leather that you, that you already had or that you found from maybe some old bits of clothes, fine. Uh, but this small tool here is for measuring uh, the width of leather. Uh, the way it works is you just um, it just has a dial here and you, you squash it onto a piece of leather and it tells you the, the thickness in millimetres here. Um, this again, super cheap Chinese one, you don't need to spend much money on these, um, probably uh, 5 to 10, maybe 15 dollars maximum and, and, and they're very, very useful. Um, next up, uh, I would say almost essential, like the, the wing dividers, um, these are pricking irons. Now. Before you're going to stitch your leather, uh, you're going to have to put a hole for your needles. It's not like stitching uh, or knitting or stitching uh, material where you just kind of go through with the needle, it makes a hole. Um, when you're doing leather work, you're going to need to make the holes first and then you're going to uh, stitch. So either you would do that with a, uh, as you go with a uh, awl, but it's diamond awl, so you would push it through to make the hole, stitch, push through, make a hole, stitch. I don't like doing that to be honest, I'm not very good at it, uh, I don't find it very consistent um, and you know perhaps those people that have done you know with a lot more experience and, and, and a lot more uh, uh, practice will, will get their all work uh, uh, or their all game a little bit more polished but I, I very rarely uh, use those. Um, so I use these, uh, and I think most people doing any projects like this would, would use a, a pricking iron. Um, so what they are is basically just a, uh, I'll see if I can show you up on the top camera, we have a camera up here as well. So it's a essentially a tool with, with teeth. Um, you can see here, this one's got two and this one's got uh, six. So you take this um, and you take your uh, nylon or wooden mallet and after you've marked your stitching line you just run along the stitching line and you like that you just hammer it down and you hammer through your holes um, so we'll, well I'll explain more how to use these when we come to making our holes um, but you can buy all different makes and models you can get them from like super cheap uh, uh, on Amazon or eBay through to you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars or pounds or euros on these things if you want to get some really high-end uh, premium uh, tools. Um, I would settle for somewhere in the middle. Uh, if you're just starting out and you're just planning to make one or two small leather items, go for some cheap ones. You know, if you think you might not stick with leather and you don't want to spend too much money, buy some super cheap ones on Amazon. Um, the only problem with them is is they're not very good quality, so these teeth break they break quite quickly but you'd be able to make one or two items um, at least one or two items before they break um, but once you've made a number of leather items you'll probably want to upgrade to these these uh, are by a company called Ivan um, I think they were about 20 or 30 euros each maybe maybe 15 I don't know they weren't super expensive so they're not these kind of big uh, expensive craft uh, 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 tools which like real pro leather users will, will, will love um, but they'll do you just fine for a small project like this. Um, so pricking, uh, 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 why have I got two? Uh, 
you, this one's got six, so it's good for going along long edges uh, where you're going to have to stamp a lot of holes. But if you're going to go around a corner, you can't go around a corner with a six pronged uh, pricking iron. So you need a two pronged pricking iron. So you can put the one first in the, in the existing hole, mark another hole. And so you just basically follow the corner around and you can do that with a two pronged uh, tool. Okay, so that's uh, ah, the only other thing I've got on my desk here is a, is a uh, little, you're not going to be able to see it from the front camera there, maybe if I hold it up here. It's a little uh, stamp now, or maker's mark or whatever you want to call it. And uh, these are great fun. Um, I use these all the time. If you want to make your own kind of leather brand or your own uh, mark on all your items, uh, then you can order these uh, little metal stamps. And you just, you, you, we, we, I'll show you when we're making the MacBook sleeve, but you just wet the leather. So you dampen up the leather and then you, you either hammer these in or you uh, use a vise to squash, squash it down. Or if you have a, a press, you can press these into the leather and it, it just puts a, a, your, your brand onto the, uh, onto the item. Um, another great way of using these is if you can get them quite cheaply, like we can here in, in, in Kiev, you can order these uh, for individually for projects. So um, I quite often, if, you, if someone's getting married and you need a really, or, or they have a special anniversary and you really need a custom uh, piece of leather work, which is just for them, just for this occasion, you can order these uh, stamps, um, stamp their name or the date of their wedding or something like that into the, into the item and you have a beautiful, you know, really unique item which is made, made for them. Um, so we'll use a, a stamp, uh, we'll stamp, put a maker's mark on, on this uh, sleeve and just so you can see how to use them. But again, not essential. You can of course make this case uh, without stamping it. Okay, so that's the tools. Uh, I'm going to take a break, but when I get back, we're going to actually go through, uh, we're going to take, take you through uh, uh, I'm going to start with a big single piece of leather and then we're going to cut it down and we're going to uh, 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 talk you through the build. 